Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and today we are going to be checking out a brand new Chevy C10 mod by Frog. Now, if you guys want to find out more information about this thing, I will leave a link to Frog's Patreon in the description box down below. And massive thanks to him for allowing me to take this thing out for a spin. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to fire it up, and then we're going to take it into the garage, and we're going to see what we can do to it in terms of customization. But before we do that, let's take a quick look around this truck and have a look at the details. Now, obviously, you're running a very old-school style suspension setup, old-school wheel and tire package. You've got an old-school style hitch back there. You've got a classic exhaust. Everything that you would expect to see on essentially a stock-ish C10 is pretty much here. Let's take a look at the interior real quick as well. You can see that you have pretty much an actual camo dash and a very old school steering wheel. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up. We'll get it into the garage and we'll see what we can do to it. Massive thunderclaps aside, let's fire this truck up now. The soundtrack definitely fits the rig. Now, right off the bat, it's not, you know, it's not over the top fast. It's not anything ridiculous. But, you know, I will say, ooh, it's got an adjustable suspension right from the factory. Oh, that's really, really cool. I say from the factory, quote unquote, from the factory. The stock suspension does have an active mode. So let's get you into the garage now and just see what there is in store for us. Now, engine-wise, we've got stock, we've got performance, we've got the tow package, and we've got upgraded. This is really interesting because the performance engine is actually an S as opposed to an S+, plus, which is, that's not usually the case in terms of, you know, Frog's performance tunes, but that's really, really interesting. The tow package, I would say, is definitely going to be your quote-unquote OP for anything that's outside of actually hauling weight, and then your upgraded is just going to kind of be a middle-of-the-road kind of balance. So let's go with the performance for now out and then gearbox wise i think we're gonna do the highway actually because usually frogs highway transmissions also have the lower ranges pre-built into them now let's see we've got stock we've got the two inch lift and we've got the flex kit now the flex kit is definitely going to be a little bit of a uh, lower center of gravity flex kit so let's do the lift kit for now and then let's see 30 inch ats 32 inch stickies which those look great Let's see. Yeah, dude, those look awesome. We've got the Assassinators, which are going to be your mud setup. Those are only 32s. They're little tires. Let's see. 32-inch Milestar Patagonias. Those look good. I mean, I love the fact that we're actually seeing some small tire usage on this truck. It's not all always about the gigantic, massive, you know, 40, 50, 60 plus inch tires. Let's see. Can you go any larger than a 32? Or is 32 kind of like where he capped this thing? I'd be really curious. You have a ton of tire options, though. I mean, the amount of tire options that you have available here is absolutely insane. Now, granted, a lot of them, like, some of them are the same tires over again, but on a different starting wheel. And then, oh, God, then you have the essentially rubber band, like, show setup, which, if you want to go that route, you totally can. But, I mean, that's completely and totally up to you. Okay, you can go up to a 35. That's why the tire list is so long. That makes sense now that you can go up to a 35 and then of course you have the wheel selection within that and then i'm sure you also have within that you have the yep yep there's the rubber band spec how silly does that look hang on oh god that looks so that is like actual wagon wheel that is like not nope nope yep we're headed back to the garage yep off we go yep nope 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 yep yeet come on all right, thank you. Back into the garage you go. Yep, nope, we're switching those out. All right, all the way back down. And then now, let's see. So we've got these mud tires. I'm gonna go with a nice set of something kind of like in between, I would say. It's gonna be a 35, but I'm gonna say it's actually probably gonna be the Milestar Patagonia. Let's go ahead and scroll back to those guys. And yeah, 35-inch Milestar Patagonia. We got some, T uh, let's see, what are those? TIS wheels, I think? Now, let's see, winch-wise, we've got the stock, uh, like, really one winch option. Then we've got a normal bed, a step-side bed, which is a really interesting look on this truck. And then you have a flatbed conversion that you can do as well. That would actually be a really fun one to see how it works. I'm thinking I'm going to stick with that particular bed for now, though. Steelcraft brush guard and stock bumper. Let me see. So if you take those off, ooh, you can get kind of like a nice... Almost like a smoothed out front end look with this thing. And I kind of like that, actually. Normally, I'm not one to take add-ons off, but I dig that. 
There's also the Armadillo Chase Rack. There's the, ooh, LP Bed Rack, LP Skinny Bed Rack. There's a lot of, like, Overland gear that you can throw on this truck. Let's see, Toolbox, Bed Stuff. Let's see, we could do a full-on, like, Overland setup if we really wanted to. But I think I might do the low-mounted, like, quote-unquote, Skinny Bed Rack. And I think that'll be a really nice balance. Let's see, Step Side Rear Bumper. We're not gonna do that. Nope. Yeah, we're not going to do that because that deletes the bed. Now, in terms of wheel selection, you have a ton. You've got SF002s, Toxins, Tritons, Turbos. Like, let's see. These are going to kind of be a little bit more of an off-road wheel style. Those are similar to an AEV wheel. You've got, let's see, Method Race wheels, Fuel Zephyrs. Let's see, Red's Beadlocks. Oh, there's your XD wheels. And it literally just keeps going and going and going, the wheel selection. I love it. And I think on this thing, I might actually go with the KMC L1s. I haven't run those on a truck in quite some time. Now, as far as colors go, you're really, like, the sky is the limit as far as what colors you can use on this truck. The dark red, oh, I shouldn't say dark red, kind of a deeper maroon red, I think looks really nice. Like, really, really nice on this thing. I also like this color. For whatever reason, like, I feel like these off, like, bluish greens look really good on trucks of this, like, of this variety and of this character. Now, I'm sure there's going to be some people that will say, what the heck are you talking about? Those colors look awful on that. And you know what? Like, I think that's the beauty of being able to paint your truck whatever color you want it to be, because at the end of the day, I mean, it really is your truck. Like, that's why you're given a color selection. Now, let's see. We're gonna do the bobble dar up there on the dash, and now it's time to take this thing out for its first rip. Now, let's go ahead and raise the suspension up. So, you don't have a dramatic amount of lift, but it's definitely enough, like, on the active suspension. It's definitely enough to give you a lot more clearance. Now, I know that I'm not on the flex kit, but I do want to see how much flex the 2-inch lift kit actually has. Now, granted, we are in high mode on the suspension, which won't make us, uh, it'll make us a little bit less flexy, but that's honestly, though, that's pretty good. Like, that's more flex than some of the vehicles that I see with quote-unquote flex kits. So, like, that's a really good result, actually. Let's take this thing out into some obstacles and see how she does. Ooh, easy. All right, let's go. Sixth gear. Sixth gear pulls pretty good. And I definitely think that if you're going to run this thing without, like, a, doing a lot of towing, like, if you're going to run it as a scout vehicle primarily, I would definitely use the highway gearbox with the performance tune. I feel like he's probably really on to something with the whole, you know, the, the hauling tune being way too over the top for anything besides hauling. Now, granted, if you were going to race this thing, yeah, I would say go as over the top as you possibly can. But if you're not racing it, I would go performance tune and highway box. Oh, yeah. Sorts out the hill climb easily. Even in automatic mode. Like, it never dropped below fourth gear. I mean, this thing just shredded it. Absolutely shredded that. Like, that is just ridiculous. All right, let's see how you do in low plus over some rocks. Now, granted, these are the game's, like, sort of slick rocks. So they're not quite as grippy as something that you might find on, like, a map with actual rock crawling trails. But here's why I always bring things out here to test them. And that's because... You know, if a vehicle can climb over these rocks, no problem. You take it onto a, you know, a map with, like, properly done rocks, and it's going to have mad grip. Now, I did kind of bury the nose of the truck in the ground a little bit, and that's why we did kind of mess up the front bumper. But I love the animations and the textures on that axle. They look really, really cool. They look good. I mean, they look like they were kind of, you know, kind of weathered and maybe pulled out of a field and then installed underneath this truck. But... That's kind of the look that I feel like you're going for with something like this. You know, it gets used. It's not, it's not necessarily like, you know, you can wash it, you can polish it up, but it's also not necessarily showroom fresh, you know? All right, let's get this thing out in the mud and actually see what it's like out here. Let's go. Not bad. Not bad. Like in the shallow stuff, this thing rips. What about into the first mud lane? Dude, it doesn't even phase it. On to the next one. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Oh, it's starting to bog it now. I mean, it's still giving the giving it a little bit of forward motion, but it's definitely not anything that I would call a quote-unquote mud truck. Now, if I went for the mud-specific tires, it would probably do a little bit better in the mud, obviously, but that's not necessarily the 
I would say that's not necessarily the purpose of this thing. That's not what it was built for. It was built to be a really fun, classic, all-round scout that you could have a really good time driving. And you could also go on the back roads and back trails with maybe some, you know, some bigger tire vehicles without necessarily falling too far behind them. I always like, you know, following people that are on like, you know, 42s or 50s, you know, on like a vehicle with 45, or sorry, 35s because, you know, yeah, you might have to pick some different lines, but, you know, if you still make it, you still make it. Dips obstacle, I'm sure it won't have any issue with at all. I would just definitely recommend taking a diagonal line on anything like this because you know when you're gonna when you're gonna run into an, an a, like a set of obstacles like this, you're gonna bury the front end of the truck very 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 fast if you don't run it diagonally. Running it diagonally is definitely the move. Let me ease it around. Not bad, dude. I'm I'm impressed with it though. It's definitely not over the top feeling. I mean, sure, is it gonna be faster than a vanilla truck? Absolutely, but. At the same time, that's kind of a good thing because, you know, I feel like a lot of the vanilla trucks are fairly slow, but, like, there are some that are really, really fast. Like, there's some like that little Tatra that is just as fast as this thing in a straight line. Now, let's get rid of this, uh, this gloomy rain real quick, and now we'll get back on the road and head out to the bridge jump because this thing, I think, is going to do amazing on the bridge jump. I mean, it's no trophy truck, sure, but even with it not being a trophy truck, I mean, I still think you're going to have a, you know, completely okay time running it off of something like that. As long as it doesn't nosedive. The biggest issue will be if it nosedives. If it nosedives, then we'll, we might have to, we might have to, uh, you know, avoid large jumps. But wow, this thing handles like a champion in high. It absolutely just handles like a champ. Let's go into interior view room. Whoa. Interior view real quick. Coming up the top. Back in automatic mode. Let's freaking go. Let me wait until we get close to the bottom, and oh my god, bro, not a single bit of damage whatsoever, and it stayed almost completely level, that was near perfectly flat, absolutely amazing, wow, that's, okay, top notch on the tuning, like, that is, that is so good, that is so good, and you know what, like, absolutely, like, top praise, like, for the tuning of this thing, absolutely absolutely incredible job with the tuning but if you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed this truck make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions on it in the comments down below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i will see you guys next time talk to y'all later